Stop and Mavericks Day. It's finally here. We are heading to the first Bassmaster Open of the season and of my life. Today is travel day and uh, we're going to uh, get checked in to the house we are staying at for all of the practice period and all of the tournament period. Cannot freaking wait. I don't think I need to say a whole lot more about this, uh, this Bassmaster Opens season uh, that I haven't said already other than this is like my dream to be able to fish this series. A lot of you guys know they changed the rules this year and so there are nine opens and the top nine guys in points at the end of the year qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the top, top level of professional bass fishing. And if you win any of these events, you qualify for the Bassmaster Classic, the most prestigious tournament in all of bass fishing. We are in Alabama somewhere right now. It's about a 10 and a half hour drive from our, our place in Houston over to Lake Eufaula, which is on the border of Alabama and Georgia. Very big fishery, like a lot of these lakes will be. And the great thing is we get to tell you guys where we're fishing for the first time ever and show you exactly what I plan to do and how I'm gonna break down practice. When we get to where we're going, we kind of get settled in a little bit, get unpacked. I'm gonna to try to tell you how we're planning to structure maybe just this tournament series with between practice, we got five days of official practice and then a two days of tournament and the top 10 qualify for the third day of this first Bassmaster Open. We might be changing that up. We probably will be changing up how we're gonna do these videos as we kind of go along in the season. Great thing is that I don't usually get to share. I'm going to be able to tell you guys where I plan to fish, what I'm looking for, show you exact spots, exact baits. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not worried about people coming back here if we fish the opens next year and it comes to Ufala. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna show you guys everything I'm doing to help you guys go out and hopefully catch some as well plan to do that the entire year but um yeah we got three and a half hours left is all been a pretty quick drive this morning and we'll catch you guys at the uh house on the lake hey we're here we made it lake eufala island right there Cool. That second one right there. Mm -hmm. From there to like right here is where the last Elite Series event, like four of the top ten guys, Buddy, Buddy Gross won it over there on some brush piles. And both the Drews got top tens right there on piles. Not that I've paid any attention to uh, anything that's gone on here before. Dude, this b and is badass. We just got here. It's way too nice for us. Just pulled into Alabama. I guess we're on the Georgia side of the lake, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Let's give these fine folks a nice shot of this lake and then let's hop on the boat and talk about Lake Eufaula. I've been uh, waiting to share this with you. The surprise that I was adding to my boat and that is this right here, the carpet wrap. People have had carpet decals with company decals forever. I was approached by Adam at Graphic Gurus who said, we can design a fully customizable carpet wrap with material that is the best material, the strongest adhesive, the best grip on it, everything. I was like, all right, all right, that's probably too good to be true. but. Send me some of the material. He's like, I got to get it in your hands. I want you to try it out. Put it on your boat. Uh, he sent me a big mat for my garage so I could spray water on it. I could see if it was sticky when it was wet, when it was hot. Stuff blew me away. And so he started putting some designs together. I gave him some logos. He starts getting it all together. And I'm just like, oh my God, this guy is incredibly talented. And the more I thought about it, I film all my videos from inside the boat. You know, besides this tournament series where Cole is gonna be following in a camera boat um, for the tournament days, all my other content all year long and during the tournaments, of course, too, from inside the boat is filmed from my chest cam and the dash cam and Cole in the back of the boat. So why not have all of my companies placed with a badass custom wrap 
inside the boat. And that's what we got right here. He sent it to me. I sent him the measurements. Usually he does it in house, but he, I sent him all the measurements and I put it on my boat last night. Uh, he shipped it from Michigan, overnighted it for me. I'll put all their information down below. I think this is gonna be the deal in the fishing industry for signage, logo signage, marketing, advertising, moving forward is this fully customizable carpet wrap, especially with all the guys that are on GoPros these days. But got the sponsors on there, got Six Sense, Waterland, got my big MF Millican Fishing logo uh, right there. Got my, my ruler, which you guys have seen. I had a, that was the material I was actually using these rulers so I can uh, just throw my fish on them really quick and give you guys a little bit of size reference for when I when I catch those those donks for you and uh, yeah onto the back got boat works bait works upper deckers is what this is actually called this material um, made by graphics gurus uh, powerhouse lithium logo back there everything mystic mountain distillery which you guys saw out there in Colorado, which is what we're drinking right now, the Outlaw Legend. And honestly, I need this right now to calm the nerves a little bit. Um, it's just a weird feeling when a, a culmination of all this preparation comes into, uh, holy shit, we're here, it's happening. I got hundreds, if not thousands of people messaging me. Gonna be watching you, gonna be watching you, gonna be pulling for you, you're gonna kill it, you're gonna be so good, I'm gonna watch your way in. I'm just like, you're lying if I said it wasn't uh, a little bit difficult to, I don't know, not feel some emotion from that on top of already this being my lifelong dream. But yeah, amazing boat wrap. I can't wait to test it out. Honestly, if it doesn't hold up over the course of the year, I'll tell you guys and I will pull it off. Simple as that. But let's hop in the boat and I'll tell you guys a little bit about Lake Eufaula right now. Okay, so Lake Eufaula here in Alabama. It's on the Alabama-Georgia border. This lake, just looked it up, it's about 45,000 acres and it's a long, kind of narrower lake. I can see the other side of the lake perfectly fine from right here. It's about, I think two miles or so across. And the main part of the lake is about 30 miles long. And then it kind of becomes more of a river in section where it's gonna fish a lot more like a river. So just as we showed you guys right back behind us, tons of docks on the main lake and a ton of big flats with drains in them. Kind of like a, one of the, some of the big flats on a Rayburn. But the main characteristic this lake's really known for is it's brush piles. It's got, supposedly, I've never been on it, but more brush piles than about anywhere in the country. So obviously brush piles are, are great fish holding structures, bait fish holding structures, but when there's that many of them, obviously I'm gonna have to find something that's a little bit different that stands out and sets it apart and really holds more fish. Let's talk about the conditions right now. This is kind of an interesting event and it's actually been fishing really, really well. The lake has. It took 28 pounds to win a local tournament here the other day. Much smaller tournament. We have 225 guys plus co-anglers fishing here five days of practice. So they're going to get beat on. It's not going to take 28 days, 28 pounds a day to win or anything like that. But still, there's eight, nine, 10 pound bass in here. There'll probably be a handful of those weighed every single day of the tournament. And it's got them. It's, I think, I don't really even know. It's to, to make the top 10 on day three, I think it's gonna take like, if the lake keeps fishing really, really well, I think it'll probably take 18 pounds a day maybe to make the top 10. That's probably the number I'm gonna be shooting for to make the top 10. Obviously, my goal is to win. I'm gonna catch as big a fish as possible. That's not always a reality in every event, but I'm gonna freaking try to catch them on the way I like to fish them. Anyways, it's springtime. The fish are moving a lot. From what I understand from the people I've talked to that are down here, which has been very limited. You can get information all the way up until midnight tonight, until practice, official practice starts tomorrow, even though you're not allowed to be on the water the last 25 or 27 days or something that's been off limits. Uh, it sounds like the fish are mostly pre-spawn. Main lake, from what I've seen online, is 60 to 61 degrees. Some of the backs of creeks are in the mid 60s, but there's a definite, just consistent warming trend leading up all the way into the tournament, which starts six days from right now. So. Highs are about 80 degrees every single day. Lows are not cold, 50s, 60 degrees. So everything would point towards a lot of fish moving up towards the bank. So one thing I do know from doing my research from past tournaments and just online research, figuring out how this lake fishes is the fish spawn first on the lower end of the lake down here. Sometimes the river fish spawn first. This lake, the river fish actually spawn last. So I think that's one factor. If these fish get really funky down here in the main lake, they get really beat on, they get, I don't know, they, they, a lot of them spawn and they get in that post-spawn funk immediately. The fish up the river are likely to still be pre-spawn, which not only will they be 
I don't know, more susceptible to biting, but they also will weigh more too. So that could be a factor to this event. Another thing is the location of launch. The launch is actually way up the lake where the river meets kind of the main lake there on the west side. And so a lot better proximity to those river fish. Down here, it's a 15 to 20 minute run with good conditions, which I don't know, it's supposed to blow a little bit. It's a north and south lake. The wind could definitely come into, come into play in this event. There's gonna be two kind of completely separate programs, I think, that are gonna come into play depending on where you're at in the lake. Most of the tournaments on this lake this time of year are one on the lower end. And that's where I take it that it's been one lately because it's been a lot of the main lake pre-spawn fish from what I've been hearing. Of course, that's two weeks before our tournament starts, so a lot can change. But down here on this main lake, I got a, a couple different series of baits that I'm gonna tie on here for practice that are gonna allow me to cover a lot of water and see what the fish are reacting to. And it's gonna pull fish out to not necessarily where I catch them because I don't wanna stick a bunch, but I can see them. So six cents, as you guys know, I'm an owner of the company. It's a company I've been with from the freaking start. They're a huge backer of everything that we're doing here with this. So I can't thank them, Casey, enough for everything that they're doing for me to support me throughout this journey in this process because they have made so much of what I'm doing possible through their commitment to me and their belief in me. Here's a bunch of six cents baits I'm gonna have tied on. So first and foremost, this might not be a bait that I use every cast in the tournament. I might not even make a cast with it. I would find that very hard to believe, but this draw glide bait is gonna be an awesome pre-fishing bait because it's gonna allow me to one, see if there's fish there because every damn fish in the lake is you know well at least come out and follow this bait right here whether it be visually or with live scope and two you guys know i love to catch fish on big baits it's going to get big bites why would i not be throwing this around just to see if they'll eat that big bait during the tournament or at least now so i can see how they're acting to it like i told you guys it's a brush pile lake so instantly I got jerk baits tied on. I'll probably have a silent version of this provoked jerk bait, a shallow version, a deep version, so I can cover all different areas of the water column. And again, fish quickly. I don't have a reason in practice here to be really slowing down, picking areas apart. I wanna cover as much as possible because even though it's not a super, super massive lake, it's gonna fish really big with all the points, the drains. I've been hearing a lot of shell beds and stuff have been getting a lot of big fish on them right now. Again, that could change as the tournament kind of goes on as it gets warmer leading up, but um, a jerk bait post-spawn, spawn, pre-spawn pre is gonna be a great bait for those fish. Another bait that I'm gonna use both up the river and then down here in the lake that I can cover a ton of water with and fish up shallow, especially since there could be some bedding fish in this event, is this whale on the little keel-weighted hook because this whale is gonna allow me to burn up the bank cover a ton of water. The fish that are on beds will either eat this or they'll at least come out and swirl on it or bump it. Even though the water is pretty stained out there, I'm not gonna be able to see them that much. You can definitely tell if they're there or not. Plus you can fish this weedless bait. I can throw it in a brush pile if I'm coming up to it. I can skip it up under a dock. There's hyacinths, that's like the main form of vegetation. I can throw it on the high edge of the hyacinth where a lot of these fish will probably be spawning. There's lily pads I can throw this thing into. I can fish this thing in about any type of cover on this lake. Versatile baits are so important, especially ones you can cover water with and get bites from during practice, especially. Last but not least, when we're fishing this lower end of the lake, pre-spawn fish on these points, these hard spots and stuff. Once again, 500 DD, something I can cast. I can fish it in five feet of water, 20 feet of water, just burn up a ton of water in practice and see if I can get some to react. And really, I can use this bait to feel the bottom. I can feel for shell beds. If something shows up bright on the side imaging, I know that it's a harder harder bottom. Really, it, shell beds are super tough to find on side imaging a lot of times. I'll be able to tell really quick if those are shell beds or rock piles or whatever down there. The second day of pre-fishing, after I fish down here on the lower end of the lake, kind of get a feel for it, scan a bunch of stuff out, see if how I really feel about it. But after I do that, I'm gonna go run up the lake and I'm gonna launch where we launch in the tournament because I always like to do that on places I'm not familiar with to see how the damn ramp sets up. Make sure I'm going to the right ramp, of course. Some of these state parks have ramps in different places. I wanna see where the check-in dock is and everything. Um, but really, I wanna fish around that area because one, it's the start of the river, which is a, a good area always where the lake ends, the river begins. Two, it's gonna be an area where I can hit first thing in the morning if I get a bad boat draw number, I don't think I'm gonna get on a spot down lake. Or if I have 10 free minutes coming back in, I can hit a spot or two um, 
as I come back in to the weigh-in area. So it's very important to find fish at least in one spot if I possibly can in that area. But really, I wanna go up there and I wanna power fish around and see if those fish, like I said, are fatter than the fish down here, are easier to catch because they're pre-spawn. They're maybe not in that bed fishing or, or post-spawn immediate funk. And I know big fish live up there. There's not as high of a population of fish, but they definitely live up there. That's gonna be more shallow power fishing. So when I say that, I'm definitely thinking these baits right here. I'm gonna cover water with them in practice. I'll probably throw that whale maybe with a, a blade on it, a flashy swimmer, but a swim jig and a Vega frog. So six cents divine swim jig, you guys have seen it forever. It really depends on the water color, what I'm gonna be throwing color wise on this bait. I love this color right here, this baby sunfish or baby sungill, I think it's called. That's my favorite color for a bluegill imitator. But I would love to throw a black and blue one with a little stroke or craw on the back of it or whatever. Then of course, like I said, there's hyacinth, there's overhanging trees, there's channel swing banks, timber, stuff like that, where a frog could come into play as well. And also in that little bit more stained water, um, this chatterbait right here, I've been making these homemade, they're really badass. That's another thing, Sixth Sense has these skirts. They sell like the best color skirts I have ever seen. It's like one of my favorite products Six Sense has and no one really talks about it that much, but this is a cool one. It's like a white ice color with a little bit of chartreuse and the back of it's got like some bone color in it. Just a perfect glowy trailer. I'll probably put this little hog farmer spunk shot on the back or I'll put that uh, the Six Sense juggle on the back. It's just perfect when I want a little bit more thump if the water's a little bit more stained up there, which I do ex expect it will be. Another great bait up there. Movement, the ADX in the wake, another bait. I can really deflect it around shallow cover, whether that be stumps, high ascent. I can fish the shallow drains with it. It's gonna be absolutely perfect. That's really my 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 two things I need to figure out. And I know that's seems like two very simple things, but when you think about it over a course of 60 miles or 50 miles worth of lake with all these different humps, drains, deep, shallow brush piles, everything in between docks grass, bedfish, pre-spawn, post-spawn. There's a lot going on right now. And one thing is for sure during this event, it's going to change like crazy. It's gonna be constant change, which is the same in every spring spawn type tournament. So it's definitely gonna be one where whoever wins this and really anyone in the top 10, it's not gonna be because they found a secret brush pile or rock pile or something like that. It's gonna be because they're constantly changing and they have a lot of things going probably gonna be someone that figures out an area that has a lot of fish and especially in these opens where there's 225 boats, an area that's a little bit more off the beaten path and not necessarily an area that stands out where they know the big fish are, they can follow them in their entire spawn phase. When they move up to the bank, they slide up on those beds in the afternoon or whatever. And then if they get done spawning, they know where they're gonna pull out to, whether it'll be the brush piles in the area, the hard spots, whatever. It's gonna be a fun event. I'm excited for it and I got some baits to rig up while I uh, sip on this bourbon. Juggle, ain't it? That's the jug. I like that, that looks cool. Dude, it's a cool bait. You ever seen lights on a damn grill? We're getting kicked out of here by a second night. Way too nice for us. Gonna be doing a lot of scanning around today. Um, came down to the lower end of the lake and I know just from looking at the map and my research I've done, these fish will spawn in these pockets all down here by the dam. Now, as a lot of you guys know, spawn tournaments can be really difficult, especially since the fish are gonna be constantly coming and going. The water's right about 65 degrees, so it's warmed up a lot lately. Um, so I'm looking for areas where they can come in or go out. And so those type of areas could be hard bottom areas, brush piles, standing timber, stuff like that. And I got both different maps going, but here's one type of cover right here that we're, we're looking at that I can show you guys, really, it's really cool the different types of mapping system and why I wanted both. So we got the Lowrance map over here, we got the Humminbird over here, and obviously down scan and side scan right now. But we're scanning, and I got my, my phone out too, which we're looking at a lot of these different road beds. Some of them exist, some of them don't. If you guys know mapping, that's how it kind of goes. Some of them are a myth. But anyways, if you look at on the Lowrance here, you guys see a road bed there? You see nothing. You can clearly see it on side scan here, but let's go over to the Humminbird and you can clearly see that defined line 
on the Lake Master mapping. So that's why I wanted both brands because Lake Master um, with Hummingbird and Sea Map with Lawrence, sometimes one's better than the other. It can vary every lake, every spot, but we can at least look at uh, a couple different things. So a lot of scanning today. I want to set the hook a few times though too, guys. I'm not just going to scan around. It definitely shows mud and more, but you could probably hose it off too. Oh good, my Lawrence actually sends waypoint like it's supposed to. This could be a spot I'd win the tournament on right here, really. Not this spot, but this whole standing timber leading into some of these spawning pockets, I really like it. The only problem is the water's a lot warmer down here on the lower end of the lake, it's 65, and so better chance they're gonna be post-spawn and messed up by the end of it. And I want some pre-spawners that are staged up. I was telling Cole on the way here, like. Obviously, you don't just want to go stick them in practice because you don't want to burn your spots up. And you also don't want to get in the habit where you think you're going to win the tournament on something you find seven days before. But at the same time, I fish a lot of days. And if I don't fish for six, seven days in a row, I'm just graphing and stuff, I get rusty. <laughs> I want to be sharp. So I got no problem banging some here. That is one nice thing about having cameras going during this event. I've heard that there is like, it's cutthroat and there's zero ethics in the opens. And people run up on our sh We will be calling them out by name to the public because I'm not gonna run up on anybody's sh And that's f***ed up. Not that, but just if someone does and it's gonna happen, so be a fun year dude it's always funny because like doesn't matter what tournament series people launch at the ramp where the launch is every single day dude i'm from texas i'm a pro at catching guard i'm glad you're out here cole i'm gonna be doing a lot of talking to myself if you weren't here not even because the camera's on I'll be like, there's a road bear there should be some rooting around out there i was telling you cole know, whatever that's valuable information other people need to too for sure i was just telling cole this is kind of how all these uh river system lakes these big river system reservoirs set up. If you look at the main lake, they got the obviously the main lake. That here's the main channel and everything. You got these spawning pockets, and then there's so many of these bars they call them. Gunnersville and Chickamauga. Most of Gunnersville are just littered with them, where there's just these high spots where they washed away over time, and that can uh, that can create hard spots, shell beds. Gunnersville's got a bunch of eelgrass, and Chickamauga's got a lot of grass and eelgrass on some of the bars there too but it's another staging area that you got to check but it takes forever to scan a bunch of them i mean we've been out for 45 minutes we've done we've gone there so good thing we got four and a half days huh Ooh, that's that's a shell bed right there hard to see if there's fish on shell beds too I'm gonna turn around and crank that really quick. What should I do for shell bed? Something fun. This guy? I like that. gonna take to get a check top 10 when i have no idea because you know it's been exactly yeah i'll oh, just i've had pulled a few off piles and stuff i haven't caught any yet but yeah. yeah i don't know i went up shallow dicked around for a little bit i probably won't be doing much of that <laughs> <laughs> oh they're over there trying to decide if this current's going right now it said it wasn't supposed to oh came and got it right there would you look at that? Would you look at that? Hopefully that's not only what's out here. Is that a hybrid or a white? It's like a hybrid. Whoa, dude! You know what? I wanted to take a cool picture of this to get on my board, but I'm about to drive over the only damn school where them pliers go. That's a bass right there. Wrong three pounder. 
right, here comes the real bass. They're crawling the bottom. We'll, we'll just have to see, but they look like whites. If I pull a lure through them and they go <laughs> scatter. Who knows though? You never know, you know? You just don't know, you know? You know what I'm saying? But when you see a spot like this, you know, but you never know. They don't eat swing heads on this side of the hemisphere. That's only in Iowa. Coo, look at them swimming up the boat. The f Oh. Oh yeah, those are bass. Yeah, and chased it up like a some bitch. They just want a moving bait. Dude, did you see them all come up off the bottom? I was reeling it in, and like eight of them went up, and I let it fall, and it thunk. Is that a tournament boat right there? Other one coming at us. Look at them, cool. Yeah, they are. They're probably right here. That's not a tournament boat. God, of fucking of course. Yeah. That's a freaking fatty. Sorry, there's lots of boats right here. <laughs> Oh, one took it from him, another one got away. And that one got it. That's a big one. <laughs> that one got away. Anyone else? They don't do this in Texas because they've seen lures before. The amount of fish on this spot is wild. It's kind of hard to see. They're all on the bottom. But there's like mega school here. I got another one. I'm just trying not to blow it out because there's so many people here. All right, I'm going to blast one more and then we're going to leave. They can't, no one around us can really see us right now. That's one of the biggest schools of offshore bass I've ever seen. It's kind of surprising how deep they are. 